this day when Sean would say to me that he was finishing as, as chair of the, the club because, well, he's been magnificent and to be a chair of a club, I tell you, is some job. It's harder than being a parish priest, I tell you, it's harder than being parish priest because if this club is like any other club, my goodness, people can moan for England, can't they? They can moan for England, nothing is right, it's like being a politician, I'm sure. And I often used to say to Sean, how do you up with it. And George says to me, it's very helpful to be slightly deaf. <laughs> Which I think is very true, isn't it? So, um, Sean, I do congratulate you. I said the other night at the AGM, there's only a smaller crowd of us here, but there were a number of things I think that Sean has, has brought to the, the club, in particularly his particular skills have been 
to sort of be so committed to it, have an eye to, um, always have an eye to the future, because I was thinking when Sean started as, as, member, as a committee member here, I think in our Diocese of Northampton there must have been anything up to 20 parish clubs at that time, and now there are five, five, and this is by far the nicest, by far the nicest. Um, and um, Sean has always sort of managed it well, honestly, and he's kept the place looking very beautiful, which I think is very important. And also had that instinctive um, feel that this parish and, and, and club needed to work together. And, and it's been a delight in my time here as parish priest to work with Sean and to trust him and to, and to feel that everything, uh, you know, would be in his hands very, very easily and very sort of well. So Sean, how do we sort of really say thank you um, after that many things? Actually, somebody else would like to say thank you to you. Um, Sean, would you just open this? And somebody quite important has, um, has just sent something to just say thank you very much to you, really. I wrapped it myself. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to hold it up, Sean. It's uh, a papal blessing from Pope Francis oh, to Sean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'd like to come tonight. <laughs> he said, "Oh, sure, I'd love to come and see Sean." He said, "But um, um, he, he, he was busy. Some, some excuse he had about something in Rome or something." So I thought, if if the mountain won't come to Mohammed, perhaps Mohammed might go to the mountain. So Sean, um, it's completely up to you how to use. But we've, um, on behalf of the parish and club, uh, bought you um, some. Uh, gift card from a travel agent and there's a little um, travel guide in there and it would be, give me great pleasure if you would take a trip to Rome at your leisure. <laughs> if you prefer to go to Barbados you're very welcome. <laughs> Up to you. You know, the Pope, the Pope won't be offended too much. Yeah, he might go with you. Sean, if you decide to go to Rome, um, perhaps during the week, I would arrange for you to get some tickets for the general audience of the Pope, or you might just want to be there at the weekend when the Pope comes to his balcony and, and gives a blessing. So it's completely up to you. But I do congratulate you. I thank you very much on behalf of the club and of the parish, and I know you're going to be still part of us in many ways, but uh, a little bit more free to, to do things to us. So thank you very much, Sean. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to say an awful lot because uh, just to say that we have had a collection for the chairman and we have something for him as well. Um, and we just like to help offer this to him as his thanks for all his work he's done. It's very, very, very <laughs> Um, it's, it's lovely to welcome Alan and Jeanette back tonight, and uh, they're great friends, and so Jeanette would like to come and say hello. I said, I said to Jeanette, I don't really like speaking. She said, I love it. She said, I love it. You don't know the alphabet. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Can you actually believe the vibe is back? And it's wonderful to see so many smiling faces. When Father Kevin asked if I'd like to say a few words, I thought, firstly, he's wrong. Me, a few words. <laughs> but anyway, of course, I was delighted. 
My dad said, what happens if he asks you to sing? I said, that'd be even better, Dad. <laughs> now then, Sean Hayes. What a legend. Okay. What does Sean Hayes stand for? He's sincere. He genuinely cares about this club and everybody in it. He's energetic. Where on earth does he get it from at the age of 81? You must have to tell me that secret, Sean. He's accommodating. If he can help you or do anything for you, he will. Knowledgeable. Alan says I can use this word because it's a silent K. <laughs> There's nothing Sean doesn't know. Hard working. And after giving over half of his life to the club, 41 years, I'm sure you'll all agree. Ageless. Sean started here when he was a young chicken. <laughs> and he's finishing here as a young chicken. <laughs> yak, yak, yak. He does love a good old gossip, does our show. Love him for it. Employer. He is the don of bosses. The best that Alan and I have ever had the pleasure to work for. And finally, yes, he's special. Sean is very special to his children, his grandchildren, the rest of his family, and of course you. His friends are not the game special to Alan and myself too. So for all that, Sean, we thank you. For all that you have done for the Holy Family Parish Club and the people connected to it. And we still love you, Sean. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jeanette. Sean, would you like to say a few words? Thank you very much, Jeanette. <coughs> very, very kind of you to say those nice words. And uh, Father Kevin, you must have been reading my thoughts. Because for the last three months, I've been thinking I'm going to roll. So, thank you very, very much indeed, and I will be taking that offer up from you. Thank you. <coughs> when I first came into this uh, church building, which was it was, <laughs> over 50 years ago, this hall was less than half the size it is now, and it had been the end of St. Anne's Hall. It was from the width of the dance floor, as you see, with the full length. At, the, at that time, I used to help run dances for the Langley Irish Society, and it was a very basic building, with no bar, just a small stage, just over here on my right-hand side. Since it opened as a club, early in 1970, it has been my second home. And it had been transformed beyond all recognition to what it is today. <coughs> it now has an enlarged hall, a smaller hall, games room and a lounge. It also has spacious accommodation for the staff that run the bars. Most of this happened under my stewardship and of that I'm very proud. I do not take the credit for this as I had a lot of help from some wonderful committee members who also gave so generously to their time of their time and energy over all those years. Today it is a very pleasant club where the furnishings are second to none and members can bring friends to enjoy their drinks in comfort. Over all that time I have enjoyed the company of so many great friends, both on committee and off both men and women who have served this club so magnificently. I have also enjoyed a very good relationship with most of the staff during all that time. And the finest of those is here tonight, Alan and Jeanette.
My time here has been an adventure, which I did not expect to last as long as it did when I joined the committee way back in April 1974. I have been fortunate to have enjoyed a tremendous and friendly relationship with all our parish priests, without exception, over all my years here. I've also had a great help and advice from them over that time. And during all that time here, I have been greatly helped and supported by my family and relatives. And for this, I am very grateful. I have given a lot of time and effort to this club over the past 41 years. And this I've done simply because I wanted to see it run well. I hope I have, in some small way, been successful in this. The thing that pleases me most of all is that since I have been chairman, the club has always made a profit, each and every year. And I now finish with an easy heart, as I leave the club, financially secure. Without exception, the one person who most helped me to give my time and energy to this club over all the early years of my late boy, Claire. Who a lot of you know, and without whose understanding and unstinting support, it would not have been possible to have given so much time all those years ago. I wish the club continued success in the future. I wish Mary, the new manager, and her husband Alan all the best for the future here at the club. I thank Father Kevin and the committee for tonight's party. And I thank my daughter Myra, Jody, and Mary for providing the food tonight. <coughs> All I do know there was other people that provided food, but I think they done the, the bulk of it. So if they'd like to come up here to me, please. I thank you very, very much indeed. <laughs> to all the lovely people I have met and continue to meet, I say thank you so much for being so wonderfully kind. God bless and good luck. I am not going anywhere. I will still be part of this community. And I thank you all for being here tonight. I wish you very well. And I thank you once again. <coughs> Just on a, a note, I'd like to tell you a little story about the uh, chapel that was going to confession. <laughs> the priest he was going into had a very bad day and he wasn't in the best of moods. Because he'd just come back from Ireland where he was held up in Dublin airport for two hours because of a security check. When he arrived back at Heathrow, he was held up for another two hours because of a baggage handler strike. So he wasn't in the most receptive of moods. Some of the fella thought they made the wrong doings, everything was going well. And he said, I nearly had an affair. The priest said, what do you mean you nearly had an affair? Either you had an affair or you did not. Well, he said, we undressed and we rubbed off one another. <laughs> so the priest said, well, for your penance, said two tickets of the rosary. And on your way out, put 50 pounds into the poor box. 
So he came out and he couldn't believe what he'd been told. So after a while, he decided to go back in. So he went in and he said to the priest, he said, I've just been in with you, he said, and I think you've been very hard on me. He said, after all, he said, we only rubbed off one another. We didn't go to bed. Well, said so the priest, what you done, he said, was the same as having an affair. So he went out and he said his prayers. And on his way out, he put his hand in his pocket, took out his wallet, took 50 pound notes out, and he was just about to put it into the box, and he stopped. He put it back in his pocket. Now the priest was watching this, so he shouted out to him. He said, I see what you've done. He said, you didn't put the money in the box. He answered, well, he said, Father, I was just about to, he said, until I thought of what you said. That rubbing off it was the same as putting it in. <laughs> It's a holy place, and it, 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 it's a series of steps. It's called the Sancta Scala. And people go up on their knees to do penance for all their sins. I'm not saying... You know, <laughs> but there's a story of a, a, a lady going up the steps, you know, on her knees, um, one by one, and the hem of her dress gets caught over the uh, heel of her shoe. And she turns around to speak to the man behind her, who happened to be an Irishman. And she said, excuse me, sir, she said, would you ever lift the hem of, hem of my dress? He said, oh, no, ma'am. He said, I'm doing this for doing that. <laughs> Bacon is home from the 
सही 